Uh, breaker, breaker. It's a code four. We don't give a damn. So you play linebacker, fullback. There was a little bit of tight end as well. I got drafted as fullback. And honestly, if I would have went free agent, I probably would have chose a defensive position. The fullback position, is it kind of dying or is it? will it always be there? I don't think it's dying. I think it's evolving. On the practice squad originally, correct? We had drafted a kicker, Harrison Bucker. Going into week one, there was two kickers on the roster. I was kind of that odd ball out. Well, it's, wait, what? Uh, crazy story how we reconnected. I think we got a man. We got to touch your face on that first. I mean, yeah, because uh, you, you you had a football camp. I had a football camp. I think that was my fifth one, uh, July twenty second, and uh, man, that, that was my fifth one. That's crazy. And you were there uh, with um, Mike Evans' agent. Well, so I wasn't with him. I just crazy. So I worked with him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay. then I ended up just seeing him there i'm like dude what are you doing here really yeah so uh pretty crazy but yeah i've known him for a while and he got me an interview with mike which is cool but uh we uh i was just here by myself because i'm making a documentary on gwinnett county and the nfl players that come Man. through there which you know you're a good story which we'll be into in just a bit but oh, yeah. yeah just seeing you i, I was kind of off in the distance while you're taking photos with like kids and stuff and i'm like okay well because we got we grew up together Pretty much. We live together, same neighborhood. It's same crazy. neighborhood. Wolf, Wolf Creek. What, what's the hand sign for the Wolf Creek? Can we, a WC? <laughs> I don't remember. It was something like this. And I, don't <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. That's Sean Richard, what it was. Right. Yeah, um, those guys. But uh, we, I don't think we ever talked. And, but, but I know your sister, Alexandria. Yep. We were the same age. And we, I think we had a class or something together. So we kind of knew of each other. But I, I definitely just, remember you, your older brother. He was tall and lanky. Like, yeah, I remember. Okay, okay, it's crazy. Because, okay. because I, I saw you and you were like, bro. I was like, you know who I am? Yes, man. But um, now we just reconnected that way, and you were so gracious enough to be open to this interview. So, so thank you for for doing this. Of course, uh, Wolf Creek game. Yeah, Wolf Creek, man. We got to get uh, Sean Richard on. We got to get uh, the whole whole tequila we really football. should man and uh i remember i told you about it at the camp that video that you had did uh about me man that was hilarious yes uh i guess we should touch base on that story too uh so this guy did you go to harvin's elementary or did you go to tequila elementary i went to alcova you went to alcova yeah right because that opened up like later because my little brother went there i went to harvin's i don't know so it must have been middle school then, but uh, we were riding the bus, middle school, and uh, bus drivers just tend to do this thing, and especially in Gwinnett County, County, where if you're just loud. If you're just loud, let's just pull over. Let's waste more people's time. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it, bro. And, I'm, and that's when I first moved to the Cuba too. I was uh, I lived in Lawrenceville, the Lawrenceville uh, Norcross area, and that was my first year in the Cuba, so I was a little wilder. You know what I'm saying? A little, a little bit more loose with the mouth. So, uh, yeah, I think you tell the story better. Well, yeah. So, it was uh, on the way home, pulled over. You have to stop being so loud. And all of a sudden, she starts using this weird language that we don't know. And she's like, if you guys don't shut up, she didn't say shut up, but yeah, along those lines, if you guys don't be quiet, I'm going to have to call a code four. <laughs> We're like, we don't know what a code four is. And this guy right here, and I quote, what'd you say? Uh, breaker, breaker, it's a code four. We don't give a damn. <laughs> Something along those lines. I remember that being the funniest thing ever. Oh, man. Just because as a middle schooler, you find everything funny. And that was just so funny to me. Yeah, bro, it was hilarious. And it was crazy as I really forgot about it until I seen that video, I was like, yo. That's insane. You see, that stuck with me because when I saw you go into the NFL, that's when I was like, let me retell the story. And then you just so happened to YouTube your name. You mm -hmm. saw that video. I was seeing what was out there. And and that was also one of the things that we were connected on when we saw each other at that football camp. So needless to say, we're here. We're doing this. Oh, yeah. We just want to get to know you about your life and what you're up to nowadays. So um, I guess it's let's start a little bit in the beginning, in those Wolf Creek days, growing up, when did that love of football grow into something special for you? 
Uh, man. Uh, well, first of all, like when I was younger, my first sport was basketball. I played my first season of basketball, and then the following year, I started playing basketball and football. And I didn't start with flag; I went straight into pads at Liver. I was at Liver with the Liver Patriots. And then I came over to the Cula, um, started with uh, Coach Mays at the Cula Park, just growing up. And uh, we had the same group of guys too. I think that's what helped our team chemistry and everything. And I, I guess I had, a different mindset. I don't know, like at that age, some guys are scared to hit, you know what I'm saying? You got those type of guys. And then some guys are just, you know what I'm saying? It's a little daddy ball that go on to, you know what I'm saying? 18 BD, shout out to B team. Everybody know I'm talking about B team is where it's at. And then, um, yeah, so I make it up to the Kula High School and I was a freshman, you know what I'm saying? I played freshman year. Uh, I was doing good, you know what I'm saying? I was at linebacker and a uh, fullback. We had Coach Maloof who were running the triple option back then. And then uh, sophomore year, I played, uh, let's see, I played JV. And there was one game, uh, one of the linebackers got hurt or something, and I got a chance to play varsity. And... Uh, Man, it's from then, we played Collins Hill. I remember it was like Taylor Heineke with Charles Perkins, the running back over there. And then since then, uh, I just developed into a physical player. You know what I'm saying? I I, I love the, the physicality of the game. And then uh, once football season was over, I would go from football to basketball and then a track. So I was year round, just boom, boom, boom. And then I did AAU as well. Uh, so, yeah, man, year-round, just straight, staying in shape, you know what I'm saying? Because everything was a stay in shape for football. I knew I wasn't going to go pro in, in basketball, you know what I'm saying? I was undersized, but I was physical. So, you know what I'm saying? I always had a role on the team and contributed. And then with track, uh, initially I was just running the 4x1, four 4x4, four four, 110 hurdles, 300 hurdles. And I was like, man, by my junior and senior year, I, did, I only did throwing. That was my first time throwing. And then I was placing the state both years. I really wish I would have started throwing sooner. And then I, I'm sitting here watching the Olympics. The Olympics just passed. I'm like, damn, oh, what? man. I wonder, you know what I'm saying, what, what it looked like if I picked up that discus or shot put again. But uh, yeah, man, from the Cula, uh, I had a tough recruiting process coming out of high school. Um, it was like all these schools were looking at me, but not, none of them were willing to pull the trigger. Um, even with Georgia Tech, I, I just knew I was about to go to Georgia Tech. Ended up going through some recruiting violations and things of that nature. And then uh, I got some offers from about Austin, West Georgia. Then I ended up visiting those schools. And I really was sold on West Georgia just because the new stadium and the opportunities to be one of the first classes to go through there and just build as opposed to Valdosta. And that was another thing too. Valdosta wanted me for offense. West Georgia wanted me for defense. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know that. And uh, I ended up choosing defense at West Georgia. So I end up going to West Georgia. Boom, red shirt. Man, that put a chip on my shoulder. It, it put a big chip on my shoulder because I felt like uh, I had worked hard enough to be where I am. And I felt like I was better than some of the guys in front of me. But in hindsight, it's probably one of the best things that could have happened because I got bigger, stronger, faster. And by the time it was my red shirt freshman year, I was rolling. Our whole class just shot out of a cannon. Uh, I think we was up there at Mars Hill. I mean, you had guys like Rocky, who was also from Decula. He was in there. Marcus Sell, shout out Marcus. Our whole class, man, just went crazy. So you mentioned that you played defense and offense. So you played linebacker, fullback. There was a little bit of tight end as well, right? Yeah, tight end and defensive. And here and there, I was more like an eagle, like stand-up edge. So that I got recruited for both. Okay, and then uh, what? where – I know you picked West Georgia ultimately in the end as a linebacker, but was your heart – really invested in defense or was there a little bit of you that was just wishing that you would just play offense? Uh, my heart was always on defense, you know what I'm saying? But 
I had the versatility and the athleticism to play offense and just the physicality to help out with blocking too. I think that was a big, big deal. And that was our brand of football too. So I, I, my passion is defense. I, I still love defense to this day, honestly. Um, but playing both sides has always gave me a, a little bit of an edge. So it was a little bit into West Georgia, right? That you started playing yeah. on both sides of the ball, right? Yeah. So uh, Coach Hall came in my uh, red shirt sophomore year. And uh, around that time, I thought about transfer um, because they wanted me to move from linebacker to defensive end. They wanted me to play an edge banded position. And uh, I took some time, you know what I'm saying? I talked, I sat down with him and Coach Dickey, and I just bought in, you know what I mean? And one thing that I was always told, even like Coach Mack and Coach Watkins from the Tula, they really ingrained in me, like, it doesn't matter where you're at, as long as you do what you're supposed to do and you play hard, like, you're going to get noticed. And I thought back to what made me pick West Georgia in the first place. And, you know what I'm saying? I ended up staying there. And thankfully I did, you know what I mean? We uh we ended up making it to the semifinals two years in a row. But uh back to that position change, I was at defensive end for my red shirt sophomore year. And then my red shirt junior year, uh, we started doing the swinging gate the two point conversion plays. And I was just in on that. And then I was in on a jumbo package um, for goal line. And then by the next year, my senior year, I was all the way both ways. So tight end, fullback, defensive end and linebacker and special teams. Wow. Yeah. But what's crazy is the third game of the season, my senior year versus Delta State, I had a high ankle sprain. So I was really worried that it was going to affect my draft stock, but it ended up working out. I got drafted as fullback. And honestly, if I would have went free agent, I probably would have chose a defensive position. When you were entering the NFL and getting ready to be drafted and stuff, teams met with you, correct? And did they specifically ask you, hey, what are you? Like, what do you want to be? Or were they just like, I think with you specifically, you should be this position yeah th there were some teams like that and uh it was literally 50 50 it was both ways and there was a long talk i had with my agent um as well but i knew preparing for my pro day and uh the all-star game like my best shot of making it to the next level um was going to be on offense so i kind of stuck with that and i prepared for that and uh when pro day came, I did everything, all the offensive drills, all the defensive drills. Um, and throughout my senior year, like my senior, that last season, we had all 32 teams come through because not only me, uh, one of my buddies, Dylan Donahue, he also got drafted that year um, to the Jets. So it was both of us on the edge. And then, yeah, wow. my sister. Can you recall which team specifically had the most interest with you? I know Carolina drafted you eventually, um, but were there any other teams that had meetings with you? Yeah, I think I went on about because they have this thing called top thirty visits, where the teams bring in guys uh, before the draft, uh, work them out, or just give them a tour of the facility. Uh, I went to Seattle. I went to Minnesota visited the Vikings, visited the Jets, the Giants, uh, the Colts, and uh, Tennessee Titans showed interest as well. Um, but yeah, I think the Panthers were the only ones that came and gave me a private workout at West Georgia. And uh, I was, it was funny too, because they had Mike Tobert. I'm like, man, that's a great fullback. Told so it was great. Right. Yeah. And then they had just won the Super Bowl. So it was just like, well, they didn't win the Super Bowl, uh, but they were in it. Fumble. And he, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're not going to go on it. Oh. We're not going to talk about that. Um, but yeah, they were just in the Super Bowl. And um, yeah, I felt like it was a great opportunity. And I was excited. 
And I had my fingers crossed. I'm like, man, I really might be doing this offensive thing. Like, let's do it. And then uh, it was sixth round, 192. They got you. And just if, if anyone looks at your career tra trajectory, they can see Carolina Panthers, 27 and 2020. The football team slash commanders 2021 uh, oh, yeah. to 23 and you kind of see like the common denominator and all that and that's ron rivera what was about ron rivera that specifically gravitated gravitated towards you and wanted you as his fullback i think it was my my mindset and my contribution and just my energy you know what i mean uh which what really happened, I signed with the Saints right after my four years in uh, Carolina. I signed with the Saints, and then I was released in December. Then that's when Ron picked me up. He he called me, and uh, I signed with the Commanders. And uh, I think it's just a testament to the type of team player I am, you know what I'm saying, and uh, my willingness to work and do jobs that a lot of guys just aren't built for, aren't willing to do, and put in that, put in that grind and also bring energy. And there's a lot of guys, you know what I'm saying, you that just aren't fun to be around. I'm, I'm not one of those guys, you know what I'm saying? I like to be cool with all my teammates, you know what I'm saying? I don't have any alternative motives. And I feel like there's a certain lifestyle that certain athletes and just athletes in general, let alone football players, kind of get led astray into, and it's unrealistic. So I'm a real down to earth player, you know what I'm saying? I I don't know, I just love ball. Ron doesn't have a job right now um, as a head coach. So do you think that do you think that's a little bit of a crime? Like he should be coaching somewhere, like in your experience, playing under him? Yes. I think that's the most players coach I've ever met. Like he really actually cares about his players, you know what I'm saying? And wants to see them succeed on and off the field. And uh, family man too. I really respect Coach Ron Rivera, obviously, you know what I mean? But I feel like his mindset as a player's coach um, really makes you want to play for the play for him and his brand. And uh, he stands up for his players as well. And that's another thing I never took for granted. What's like a maybe like a story that maybe a lot of people don't know that, you know, really spoke about like the character of Ron, whether it be in the locker room, whether it be him standing up for a player, like the media, whether it be. Um, I think that's one of the main things is the media. You know what I mean? He shuts down a lot of BS that the media tries to throw on players. Um, obviously what sticks out the most is Cam, you know what I'm saying? When he, uh, had his shoulder problems and issues, but he really stuck up for him. And nobody knows what's going on in the facility. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have an opinion about it, about something they have no idea about. And Coach Rivera is shutting that shit down. You know what I mean? Like, he's not going for it. And yeah, there's some, you don't there's have to something I don't want to speak about. Yeah, but I would say like, just the interviews and the media, and those type of interactions. And even when players have stuff going on off the field that uh, as long as you communicate with him, okay, go take care of that. You know what I'm saying? Go take care of this family, family matter. And then you come back to us when you're ready. Like that's the type of coach Ron Rivera is. So. Yeah. Let's back up a bit and, and kind of go year by year of uh, the past seven years uh, of you being in the NFL. So, Started in 2017 with the Carolina Panthers. Oh, my memory ain't that good, but we we gonna try. How how many games did you play? You were on the practice squad originally, correct? Yeah. So, oh man, this was crazy. So I ended up getting drafted, um, going through OTAs, you know, or yeah, mini camp, and then OTAs. Um, shout out Daryl Young too. Great great guy to learn from, and uh, I was going through camp. Um, you know what I'm saying? Everything, I felt like I was doing everything right. I'm still learning too, because you got to remember, like I'm new to, I'm new to offense in a sense because I was defense all these years. And then 
I didn't play offense for about three years in between. And then I started my senior year at West Georgia playing both ways full time. So there's adjustments I'm still making and growing as an offensive player as far as like catching the ball, um, certain blocking techniques. Of course, the physicality was there is just fitting in, understanding coverages, understanding uh, the fronts, defensive setups and everything in that nature. Uh, but I felt like, you know what I'm saying, I was doing my thing, doing my thing, and then boom, we get down to uh, roster time, you know what I'm saying? All the guys hesitant, seeing who's going to get released, put on practice squad and all this. So uh, we had two kickers at the time. We had drafted a kicker, Harrison Bucker, in the seventh round, and uh, we had a veteran kicker. And was that Graham Gano? Yeah, it was Graham Gano. We were just in a pickle, I guess. I don't know what was going on upstairs. I don't know what goes on upstairs, you know what I mean? But I don't make those decisions. But going into week one, there was two kickers on the roster. And then I was kind of that odd ball out. And then I talked about it with my agent, you know what I mean? I felt, I felt the type of way about it, but I'm one of those guys to where it's like, I still have the opportunity in front of me. You know what I'm saying? I sat down with my coaches like it's not, it's nothing personal, you know what I'm saying? And I understood too, from their side, I'm still growing, I'm still learning. So those first two weeks of my rookie season, I was on P-Squad. Um, they had went out to San Fran and then the following week, I was still on P-Squad. And then the third week of the season, they elevated me and I was on active roster the rest of the time. Wait. Hold on. I got to back up. So they chose two kickers. Oh, yeah, roster. we had two kickers on the uh, roster. Yeah. And they chose to keep two kickers over a fullback, over you. But, I mean, at that time, too, you had Ed Dixon as well who kind of filled that role That's fair. as an H-back. And, I mean, he was good at it. And he also – uh I wouldn't even say he backed up Greg because we, we had a lot of 12 personnel, but he would go in for Greg Olson as well. And, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, and, and you said that you felt a certain kind of way, but you obviously got over that and matured right. and stuff like that. I mean, like yeah, like anybody hearing that would be like, wait, what? It, it was tough, too, because I had just signed my lease at an apartment complex. Right. And – uh I remember this too. I, I had got some like posters and pictures to hang up on the wall, got a TV and all that. And then I got that call, like, boom, I'm getting released. To this day, like, I don't like putting pictures up because it, it's a reminder never to settle in or never, right. you never feel too comfortable or too complacent. You know what I mean? And even with my life now, any of prop properties I have acquired over the years or since I've been in the league, I plan on using those as investment properties. And uh, it's, it's something me and my lady go back and forth about today, too. No, no, it's a good investment. Booming market, by the way. Everybody's looking for a place. Yeah, I'm um, trying to tell you. Wow, that's that's interesting. And it's really, I guess, goes into, like, we don't know what NFL teams are thinking. Like, they, yeah. they have. <laughs> and, and, I, and I mean, like, maybe they're on to something because Harrison Bucker just signed a huge extension. Oh, yeah. He's, like, a, one of the best kickers in the NFL today. So... You know they were definitely on to something, um, but I mean you. They were they, to they. There were two really good kickers. You know what I mean, right? Uh, Graham Gano and Harrison Buckter. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm. But it, it worked out. You know, you eventually go into the practice squad, and then you know they liked you enough to um, you know, keep you around. And whenever it was your time for your name to be called, you got called up. Now you were drafted alongside in the same draft class as Chris McCaffrey, correct? Correct. And so playing with him and blocking for him for essentially four years, what was it? What was it like? Because you also he's a different type of athlete. You also blocked for for Alvin Kamara, yeah. Which we'll get into in a bit when you when we talk about the Saints. But yeah, he's a different type of athlete. And how important was it? I, I guess like the game plan, um, like it eventually once Christian comes onto the scene, they're like, hey. We got to get the game plan centered around CMC. How involved was your role and how important was it for the success of the Carolina Panthers? 
Well, first it was it was Jonathan Stewart. So that was that was uh Big J Stu. So 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 Jonathan Stewart was the f- was you're talking about the running back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then CMC was kind of like a third down or like a Yeah, kind of a switch up, you know what I'm okay. saying? Cuz he he brought uh more speed to the edge, I guess you would say, and not so much as in between his tackles what uh Jay Stu was doing. So it was definitely a switch up and uh you know, what I mean, my role was either I'm lead blocking on the outside, arc blocking, or running the ISO or power kicking out the end. And my role just progressively got more, uh, I guess, amplified throughout those four seasons at the Panthers. But it also went along with my pace of learning the offensive system, uh, understanding, reading certain defensive coverages and certain looks. I'm not going to lie, like some of those uh, were a struggle for me. But um, I had great coaching from my peers, like Daryl Young, who was putting me on game with certain things, and Greg Olson, you know what I mean? But Pete Hainer uh, and Coach Skip, man, they they really they held me down. You know what I'm saying? I'm going in – 6 a.m., 5 a.m. meeting with my coach, you know what I'm saying, just to get ahead and uh, learn specifics of the position. You know what I mean? And uh, I think my role increased. I got a few I got a few roles here and there uh, in 2017 to get my, my feet wet, I would say. And then by 2018, I felt like I was rolling. You know what I mean? And that's when um, – Christian started to get more reps, you know what I'm saying? He he started to, you know what I'm saying, kind of take over. And my lead blocking role also transitioned into pass protection as well. So from the two back set, you know what I'm saying, you'll be back there. Uh even split out motioning. It was all kind of new to me because we didn't do a lot of motioning with me at West Georgia. But yeah, it's just a learning curve that I had to get with or get going. You are talking about like the the heavy sets? You don't really see that in the NFL too much. I mean, you have like those jumbo packages, but like the yeah. traditional like I formation, like the twenty ones, the twenties, the twenty twos, yeah. all that stuff. It's just like you know the Man, fullback power position. counter ISO. You know what I'm saying, Bob? So and there's certain. Like different coaches have different ways of teaching it, and I I know that now. Like being on three teams, just sometimes you got to get the job done. There are some versatile fullbacks out there that are used in certain instances. For instance, Kyle Uzcheck, Forty Niners. Um, yeah, fullback for them is pretty important. But nowadays, especially if you look at an offense kind of like the Miami Dolphins, you know where. They have two backs, but they're two running backs. Uh, do you think with like the the fullback position, is it just is it kind of dying, or is it will it always be there? I don't think it's dying. I think it's evolving um, because a lot of teams, like you said, they're they're looking for that Kyle use check. You know what I'm saying? Alec Engel, shout out both of them, great fullbacks. Um, just because a lot of teams that went to a West Coast offense, they're passing the ball more, and it's just not ground and pound, you know what I'm saying? Horse collar, uh, big shoulder pass, 260-pound fullback. Like, it's not – that's not the game no more. But uh, I feel like if you can do – have a good mix of your blocking ability and able to catch the ball out of the backfield, I feel like it increases the uh, notoriety to fullbacks. And I feel like you should check in uh, – Alec Engel, they've done a great job of showcasing that. And I feel like this past, well, throughout my career, uh, my first touchdown was, to, they threw it to me in the flat, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's just something you have to have as a fullback. And right now it's about 50-50 in the league as far as teams using fullbacks. Um, but I definitely think it's more just of a, what they're looking for in a skill set. I don't think the fullback position is necessarily going away. Uh, do you feel like it's tougher for a fullback 
to get a spot on a roster as opposed to maybe because people would say oh well there's only 32 kickers out there only 32 punters with fullbacks it could only be like 26 or right. 25 you feel exactly. like it's just much tougher to get a spot on a roster uh yes i definitely do and i think uh what helps any fullbacks listening to today is special teams you know what i'm saying i feel feel like any football player tell you that like you have to contribute on special teams and you got to be willing to go out there run down that field run down on kickoff you know what i'm saying be back there on the second level for kickoff return or first level and even punt you got to have great punt protection and uh even punt return you got to be able to use your hands and it all comes down to being physical and having that mindset of my guy's not gonna beat me you know what i mean and then from there, it's like, okay, we know this guy can play teams. He works his tail off. Um, he's explosive, and he's willing to learn. And then that transitions to offense, too, you know what I'm saying, as far as being able to block, being able to catch the ball, and also protecting. Uh, like nowadays, you see a lot of fullbacks in protection. So that's just an evolving position. Yeah. It's not just ground and pound. You run down here and hit this guy. No, it's just, it's more than that nowadays. Oh, yeah. I mean, NFL is just continuously going to evolve. It's past happy league now. So uh, definitely getting the uh, the assets that, that help out their offenses. Uh, but, yeah, after a couple of touchdowns in Carolina and blogging for CMC, you decided to um, take, take your talents elsewhere uh, after your four-year contract was up. Was it a four-year contract? So you got you yeah, initially got released, right? It was my rookie deal, so it was four years. So how does that work if if you were to get released and put on the practice squad? Do you still have a four-year contract? Yeah. Okay. The way my contract was set up. Yeah. Gotcha. So that that contract ran out, and then uh, the Saints called. I became a restricted free agent, yeah, and then the Saints called, which was – they were in our division, so that's one of the teams we played twice a year. They beat us three times my rookie year. <laughs> Twice during the season, and then once they knocked us out of the playoffs in the first round. But uh, we played them a lot, and uh, I guess they they seen the way I play, seen my blocking ability, my special teams attributes, and that's the team I ended up going to and deciding to go to. Alvin Kamara was the main back over there, and fellow Gwinnett person as well. Did you guys bond over that at all, or did you mention <laughs> yeah? We that? chopped it up a little bit over there too, because uh, my my cousin. They were in the same class. They were the top running backs coming out of Gwinnett County that year. So okay, gotcha. Yeah, we were familiar with each other. Gotcha. And then you're you end up block of room. And then I remember watching NFL Red Zone live and seeing you at the goal line in the flat, like you mentioned, grabbing <laughs> that touchdown. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that reception. Um, and you were so you were so hyped too. Oh yeah, because I hadn't I didn't score all of 2020. I didn't score. I don't think. That was when Matt Rule became head coach. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, I didn't score. So that was my first time scoring in a couple of years. I was just hyped, you know what I'm saying? I was glad to touch the end zone again. And I don't know, I felt like it was it was like a payoff to the hard work I was putting in. And training camp and that football in New Orleans is just different. It's that just different. But after that touchdown, because it was probably a couple months after that, they decided to move in a different direction. Yeah. Uh, what, what, why do you think that was? The Saints are, are, have always been known for having uh, multiple fullbacks. I think even now they have two fullbacks competing for a roster spot. And uh, I try not to say too much, but uh, – they they had what they wanted, you know what I mean? And uh, I appreciate them for giving me the opportunity, Sean Payton. Um, but, yeah, I guess they were looking for something else. Yeah. But it worked out while I was there, you know what I'm saying? I did what I could, special teams as well. I felt like Coach Riz had us going, man. That's, that's one of the funnest seasons of special teams, I would say, was uh, getting coached by him just because of the energy and his schemes and his mindset. It's just different, you know what I mean? And Sean Payton, like those, like the way the coaches vibed over there was 
it was very, very encouraging. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it was just the right environment. But, uh, yeah, they they had uh, their mindset on a fullback who, you know what I'm saying, they won it. But uh, it is what it is. It worked out for him. I'm happy for him. No, it worked out because a familiar face and Coach Rivera uh, ended up wanting you uh, to play with them early, uh, later in the season because it was like week 15 or something, right, that you got, you got the call. Something like that. And then you spent the next, I guess, the last half of – or last – few weeks of 2021 and then 22 and 23. Yeah, I ended up playing maybe two games. Okay. I suited up two games in 2021 for the Washington football team. The football team. And then 2022 is when they became the commanders, right? Yeah. Let's be honest. Like, I just – I want to ask someone that was in the locker room, what was the reaction to the commanders? Well, they – first of all, they spoiled it. Because there was a camera view and it showed like the I name. I saw that. Like, yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, it was just like, whatever, bro. Whatever. It is what it is. Because no matter what the name is, we still have to go out there and play. You know what I mean? But I definitely will say, um, guys definitely miss the Redskins. And I feel like as a fan base, they also miss it as well. I don't know. I don't know if it'll ever happen or come back, but the Redskins, yeah, that's, that's where it was. Man, that just sounds powerful. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's got a lot of tradition behind it too. So yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, yeah take commands. Is uh, they really wanted that? Right. I don't even remember the alternatives. You don't. I don't. I don't. There's a lot of rumors out there of like. I thought the Warriors would be cool, but I think like copyright and fringe. Yeah, nah, for sure. I think there was a guy actually that um, once there was buzz about the. I think I heard about that too. Yeah, Red he Skin bought the uh, bought everything. <laughs> he bought everything. He put a premium on it too. Like if y'all want it, y'all gonna have to pay me. Good for him. Which is wild. I mean, smart business move, I guess. Uh, yeah, smart investment. Uh, I don't know if he took Commanders, but. Um, if he did, congrats to that guy because he got a big payout. It was a power play for sure. The past couple of years, you were you were with them, and uh, I think it was the practice squad, right? That you were. It, it was kind of like you got released for like an injury settlement. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, I want to ask, how does that work in the NFL? So, what does that mean when people see an injury settlement? I ended up pulling my hammy. I got hurt, and I had the option to either do IR. Or sign an injury settlement, and uh, if I were to go on IR, I would do my treatment at the facility and everything. And then when I'm healthy, I can't sign back with that team, so I just be out there again. And then the injury settlement, uh, based off your injury, they you know what I'm saying every injury has a certain time frame of you know what I'm saying you understand like. Okay, it should be good by then. So I ended up deciding to sign an injury settlement. And then I had a window of three weeks when I could return back to a team to the team. And as soon as that window was up, I went back. And during those three weeks, I could go anywhere else. If I was getting buzzed or I wanted to sign with a different team, which I actually had a couple options, which where y'all at right now. <laughs> but um Yeah, so you get to – once that window's up, you can go back and sign with the team, you know what I'm saying, you were initially on, and that's what happened. And I think that was another reason why I didn't want to sign the injury settlement because I knew I wanted to go back to the commanders. You, you decided you wanted to go back prior to a couple teams, like, reaching out to you, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And prior to that. Once they started reaching out to you, were you still like, mm, no, no, thank you, I just – For me at this point – uh it was about going back to a system I was familiar with and I had an opportunity uh, to grow in. And with other teams, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't clear what my role would be or if I'd even have an opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, get to play or would it just be P-Squad or you know, that type of deal. So, Gotcha. Yeah, so that makes sense that you would go back to the commanders and then uh, – Finish out the 22 season, 
23 season as well. Uh, and now you're a free agent. Yes. Which, uh, you know, I talked a little bit to with Andrew Adams. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we met recently and uh, he said he knew you. And um, he's kind of the same deal where he says he's a free agent. He's just kind of checking out. I think his situation is kind of weird. Um, but uh yeah he's just waiting to just just continuously working out i guess yes. just trying to be in the best shape that he can and until someone calls so um but what's it what's it like is it just a lot of working yeah, out and uh, just hanging around or it has its highs and lows you know what i'm saying especially like for me never being in this position i try to find the brighter side of everything um spending time with my family seeing what life would be like after football and just having more uh, family time and, you know what I'm saying, experiencing life uh, where I have to set my own schedule, where I, you know what I'm saying, I have to be proactive with uh, certain things. <clears throat> and like, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, seeing my nephew play football for the first time. Like, it's honestly a blessing to be able to sit here, go to his first practice, be at his first game and just take these experiences with him. Um, and then on the other side, it's investment opportunities too. You know what I'm saying? Some availability that I usually don't have. Or I have availability now. So I have opportunities to take meetings and go look at certain investment opportunities. And it's, it's, it's different, but uh, it's something that's growing on me. And I feel like it's also making me a better person and a better man too. So you, you obviously still have aspirations. You want to continue your career. A hundred percent. Uh, what, what's that workout schedule looking like? So right around during OTAs, I was going pretty hard. I was going pretty hard. Cause I was like, okay, at any moment I can get a call. And then, um, I kind of backed off. Uh, I was going like five days a week. And then I started going like three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday or Thursday and then uh, I know once their schedule they had that break that two week break uh, that's when I took a break you know what I mean and then right when I want to say three weeks before a training camp that's when I start picking back up and just going hard I mean, I'm throwing on shoulder pads and helmet. Like even today I had on shoulder pads and helmet just to get acclimated to it. I don't want to get too far from the game to where I come back and I feel uncomfortable, but there's nothing that can compare you for football conditioning unless you're playing football. I understand that aspect, but uh, yeah, I think just working on all the small details of the game is going to be huge for me too. <clears throat> and that's what I've been working on with my trainer. You know what I'm saying? Certain footwork, um, certain blocking techniques, certain route techniques, uh, even catching a ball. You know what I'm saying? It's just focusing on all the little details. So when I do get that call and I do get the opportunity, I'm ready. Any sort of, sort of buzz at all of any team? Oh, yeah. There's, there? there's some buzz, but no, uh, I haven't gotten an official. All right, come on, let's do this. So I guess that's what I'm waiting on right now. Yeah. And I talk to my agent weekly. So, yeah, hopefully that works out for you. I mean, you, you look incredible and uh, seems like you're going hard and, um, you know, just sitting down with you and getting to talk to you and reconnect with you. Um, you know, I, I mean, just growing up in this community, everybody always talks highly of you and the kind of person that you are. And obviously Ron Rivera saw that in you. That's why he <laughs> always wanted to bring you back. And, I appreciate it. Uh, the locker room, you know, just you saying, Oh yeah, I'm just like a, a player's guy. I, I just connect with everybody in the locker room. I can definitely feel that from saying this interview. So uh, guys, reach out to him. <laughs> this, this is the man right here. Um, Alex, I appreciate your time. And you're you're actually going back to Charlotte now. Yeah, I'm about to get right on the road. Yeah, and I you just made a quick stop here to say hi to us and, and sit down for an interview. So I appreciate that all the time and uh, best of luck to you in your future. Thank you. Best of luck to you too, man. Keep this thing rolling. All right, appreciate it, man. Keep being great. Thanks, man.